welcome to Coastlands Community Church. We are situated in Tableview, Cape Town, led by Pastors Xavier and Heather Adrianza. We are a church family that is committed to love, accept, and forgive. Our goal is to reach out, allow the Holy Spirit to bring restoration, and release people into their God-given purpose. May God bless you as we worship and hear God's Word together. Good morning, family, and welcome to our online service. Uh, what a privilege it is once again to come together and worship God. And I invite you to come and worship together with us this morning and uh, open up your heart to receive God's Word today. At the same time this morning, we're going to be sharing in the Lord's table. And so uh, I encourage you to get the emblems together. And uh, at the end of our message this morning, we're going to share in the Lord's table. Uh, bring the family together and let's uh, celebrate the goodness of the Lord this morning. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Father, this morning uh, we are so grateful that this is the day that you've given us. Thank you that even in every season we can give thanks because that is the will of God. We honor you this morning and worship you. Uh, thank you once again, God, that uh, you come to speak to us by your Spirit. And this morning, we invite your Holy Spirit to come and speak and uh, work in our hearts this morning. Uh, reveal truth to us, establish truth in our hearts, and I, we pray that the shift that needs to take place today will take place. Thank you once again, Father, for your love and your mercy towards us. Thank you for your protection. Even in this season, thank you for your provision and thank you for your protection. In Jesus' name, amen. Looks like tonight The sky is heavy Feels like the winds Are gonna change Beneath my feet The earth is ready And I know it's time for heaven's rain It's gonna rain Cause living water's what we desire To flood our hearts with your holy fire Rain down All around the world singing rain down can you hear the earth is singing rain down all around your people singing rain down rain down My heart is heavy Feels like it's time To dream again And I see the clouds And yes, I'm ready To dance upon This barren land Hope in my hands Cause living water is what we desire To flood our hearts with your holy fire Rain now All around the world we're singing Rain now Can you hear the earth is 
singing rain now my heart is dry but still I'm singing rain now rain down rain now all around the world we're singing Heart is dry, but still I'm singing. Rain down, rain
lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope hallelujah he's the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living
Let's take our Bibles and would you take your Bible and say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is God speaking to me. I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. And I can have what it says I can have. I've often used this phrase in the last few months or the season that we find ourselves in, saying that these are defining moments. And I trust that we would not take this lightly, because we are living in defining moments. More than ever, I find myself reflecting on events, and it's amazing how some of these situations often come very close to home, as we are impacted in some way in this season. It should make us stop and consider and reconsider where we're at, how we live, and the choices we make in this season. The word that God gave us in 2020, the word shift, is such a relevant word to us in this season. I had no idea the impact that this word would have and how God would use this word in this season. God is definitely calling us to make a shift, a change in the way we think, a change in our attitude, the attitudes of our heart, change in our position, a change in direction in some cases, and mostly a change in the way we live. And when we make that shift and we make that adjustment, we, we allow the Holy Spirit to bring increased effectiveness in our relationship with God and in the purpose that God has for our lives. The Holy Spirit this year is challenging us. It's a year of challenge to adjust, to change something, to bring us into an increased dimension of our effectiveness. And our focus on the Holy Spirit in the last few weeks has been critical as he desires to make the much needed necessary shift in each one of our lives, in our hearts. At the same time, I want to bring a truth to us. Once we make the choice to shift, he is able, the Holy Spirit is able to empower us to make the shift. Often we, we battle in this area where we think, how am I going to do it? Let me encourage you this morning. Once you make the choice, the Holy Spirit will help you, will empower you to carry out that shift that is required. Let me remind you too, that when God spoke to us about shift, he gave us a warning that unless we would make that shift, there will come a shaking. 
And as I mentioned over the past couple of months, that there's times and there's seasons. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose. And so we have seasons and we have purpose for that season. And last week we spoke about this season. I mentioned about these last days, the end times. And God has, has in these times, He's ordained moments, kairos moments, God-given moments for shift to take place in 2020. The question that should, should be on each one of our hearts is, Lord, what shift are you asking me to make right now? And I want to take us back because the scripture that God gave us at the beginning of the year is an extremely relevant one for us today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14 to 15, and we use the Passion Translation. And it says, therefore, it is Christ's love that compels us. And when we think about that word compel, it speaks about that, that this love gives us passion and motivates us. And then, then it goes on to say, because we are absolutely convinced that he has given his life for all of us. We need to be convinced that he has laid down his life for us. This means all died with him. And this is the latter part of the scripture is where God is desiring to put a focus on. He says this means all died with him so that those who live should no longer live self-absorbed lives. In other words, lives for themselves. But lives that are poured out for him, the one who died for us and now lives again. The, the whole idea of us, our lives being poured out, that we, we live in such a way that we no longer live for ourselves. Our goal in shift is to take us to a new level of effectiveness for Jesus, where we live completely for Him, not self-absorbed lives, that are, but lives that are willing to be poured out for Him, set aside, devoted to His purpose. For this to happen in our lives, we need a shift in our relationship towards God as our Father, Jesus as our Savior, and the Holy Spirit as our Helper. And we do, when we do this, we become more and more kingdom-minded. And I must, must point us back to this. We need this shift to take place in our relationship with God as our Father, with Jesus as our Savior, and the Holy Spirit as our Helper. Shift in our relationship with God produces a new way of thinking, a new attitude, a new outlook, and a new way of living. This season requires us to respond and not to react. And God has allowed, as I mentioned before, God has allowed a significant shaking to take place to get man's attention. And the primary purpose of this season is to get man to turn back to God. This call is both to believers and unbelievers, those who have not accepted Christ into their lives. For those who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior and has not invited Jesus into their lives, I want to challenge you today because in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, it says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As a matter of fact, Acts 2 verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This crisis is an opportunity for the Lord to touch and save people. This crisis is an opportunity for you and I to turn to God. And for us, His children, God is calling us back to His original intent, away from the distractions the deceptions that has infiltrated our lives. And even in the context of the church, God is bringing the church back to his original intent, away from the distractions, the deceptions that has infiltrated the church. And God desires that we become a body that is effective in the earth through love. And he's preparing his bride for the time that he will return. This week, as I was reflecting on a tension that right now all believers face. And this is the tension. We live in this world. We're navigating through the day-to-day -day issues of life, the challenges, the threats of a virus, the losses 
in many ways. Some people loss of life, some people loss of a job, some people loss of income. And yet, as we navigate that tension, as we navigate in this life, yet we are called to keep the end in mind. My message this morning is how do we live with the end in mind? We continue to live because we're here right now. But, but how do we live in such a way that we keep the end in mind? As I thought about the past few months, it's crazy to think that in January and February of this year, we had a completely different focus. Many plans were being made regarding the rest of 2020. In many ways, there was a focus on how we knew life to be. And then all of a the sudden, there was a twist. And we were confronted with a threat, a crisis that impacted many families, individuals, not only through death, but other forms of loss, jobs, income, possessions, livelihood. Now we are at a stage where we're forced to redirect our thoughts back to how do we continue to do life under completely different circumstances. In many ways, abnormal circumstances. So there's this tension of how do we live this life right now where we are with the end in mind. And my message this morning is live your life with the end in mind. And, and it's, it's a case of balancing the now with the eternal. This morning I want to share three truths that help us to do this. How do we continue living but with the end in mind? How do we juggle the now, the temporary, with the eternal? And the, in these three truths, how do we continue living but with the end in mind? And my first truth this morning is we need to make it a priority to seek the Lord daily. If we're not careful, we can overlook this by saying, well, we should be. Most of us, when we, when we think about the idea of seeking the Lord, well, we should be seeking God. But I'm referring this morning, beyond the casual, I'm referring to an intentional seeking of the Lord daily. As God's children, we, we, have, we need to have the discipline of reading God's word and praying. But I'm referring to seeking the Lord daily. I'm referring to being intentional about seeking God in this season, because that will help us to live with the end in mind. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6 in the New, Le New King James Version, it says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. There's a strong sense of recognizing, as we look at that scripture, of recognizing the Kairos moment, the God-given moment, the God-given opportunities to seek God and to call out to God. Many often seek and crowd only when things go bad. This season calls for us to seek and call out to, can I put it to you this way, to develop a, li a lifestyle of seeking the Lord, being intentional in seeking God. The word seek means to recognize the need for. Often when we have a need, that is when we seek. And I want to encourage us today that we begin to develop a hunger to seek God. The word seek means to resort to. It means to inquire. It points to a dependency before we make our next move. A dependency on God's counsel, the Holy Spirit's guidance, the Holy Spirit's direction. And every day, the Holy Spirit is urging us to daily seek Him. The preceding verses helps us to that scripture in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 4. Helps us to understand this principle of seeking the Lord. In Isaiah 55 and verse 1 to 3 in the New King James Version, it says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. It speaks directly into our current circumstance because there, there are many needs in people's lives. In some cases, 
a, a, a burning desire to, to, to connect with God. He says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and with, without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? In, 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 the, in our current scenario right now, we find that people are desperate. There are they, they various needs that people are confronted with. But that scripture speaks about why are you wasting your time? And then Isaiah, Isaiah helps us to understand the concept of seeking. He says, listen. This is what the Lord says. Listen carefully to me. If we are going to seek God, we're going to have to learn to listen carefully to what God is saying. He says, eat what is good. There is something that the Lord wants to speak to us in this time as we begin to seek him. He says, let your soul delight in itself in abundance. And then he says, incline your ear and come to me. Yeah, and your soul shall live. This is how we begin to seek God. When we begin to incline our ear. In other words, we begin to push everything back, everything aside. And we begin to focus on the Lord's voice. And we incline our ear. And we come intentionally to hear. Because when we hear, your soul shall live. And God says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. This principle of seeking requires a te attentive, careful listening, a willingness to hear. And when we talk about hearing, we speak about not only receiving what the Lord has to say, but responding to what the Lord is saying to us. It distinguishes between the casual and the intentional. Often when we, we can casually be, be trying to listen to what God is saying. But this speaks about an intention, intentionality of seeking God and listening to his voice. In Hebrews 11 verse 6, it teaches us how we need to position ourselves to seek him. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When we seek him, we need to have confidence that God will speak, God will counsel, and God will direct us. If we're going to seek God, we need to come to God in faith, knowing that God hears us, knowing that God desires to speak to us, knowing that God desires to give us counsel, and knowing that God desires to direct us. Seeking God has got to do with pleasing God. And that requires faith, a complete, authentic hope and trust in Him, and His ability to intervene. As we seek God, we need to, daily, we need to understand that the Lord wants to direct, and God wants to release His ability over our lives to intervene. In these times we live in, there is a need like never before, to come daily and seek him. The danger is assumption or taking things for granted. Often we function out of our past experience and we can miss the counsel of the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, David was facing a challenging time, just like we do right now. And um, the Bible speaks about David as a man after God's own heart. But he was facing a challenging time. In this account, the Amalekites had attacked them. And when David went out to battle, the Amalekites had come when they were away. And they had attacked them. They had burnt down everything. They had destroyed the city. And they had taken everyone captive. As you read through that account, you come to find that David's men even, even stood up against him. Because they were blaming David because of the situation. Under these circumstances, most of us would have reacted by just going out and defending and attacking. How would you and I deal with a situation like this? I have to admit that there have been many times out of desperation that I have taken things into my own hands. However, David understood 
the principle of seeking the Lord. In verse 8 of 1 Samuel 30, verse 8, it's, he says this. It says, so David inquired, or David sought the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this truth? David did not take it for granted that even though everyone had been captured, everything had been destroyed, that he was to attack or go after the enemy. The Bible says David sought the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. He was seeking God. He said to the, he said to the Lord, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And then God answered and he answered him and he said, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail you will recover all. How, how much more in these times do we need a word from God in, in, in our next steps in what we do? But it will require us to seek the Lord and be intentional about willing to hear what God has to say. We encouraged in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 7 that we are to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We, we are to believe God. We are to have faith in God. And then, as Solomon writes, he says, and lean not to your own understanding. If we are going to believe God, we're going to have to set our thoughts and our agenda aside and not lean on our own understanding. And he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. There's a warning in that scripture. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. So we come to understand that if we're going to seek the Lord, we can only seek the Lord by faith. We come to understand that if we're going to seek the Lord, we're going to have to push our understanding aside and begin to trust God with everything we have. We come to understand that as we begin to seek God, we open up the door for God to begin to direct our paths. We are warned in that scripture that we do not become wise in our own eyes. I, I particularly think about the account with David. David was not wise in his own eyes. He did not make the assumption that I can just go and pursue. I can go and attack. He came before the Lord and he, he said, he inquired of the Lord. He said, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? These times that we live in require more and more for us to seek the Lord. Many are panicking, fearful, f they facing uncertainty. But one word of counsel and one word of direction can alter your destiny, can alter your circumstance and your situation. Seeking the Lord declares our dependency on God, declares our dependency on the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 17 verse 26 to 28 we come to understand God's desire God's plan for our lives in Acts 17 26 to 28 and the apostle Paul writes and he says and he made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings he begins to give us a background and understanding that God has made from one blood every nation to dwell on the face of the earth. And God has predetermined where man will be and at what time various people would be. But then he goes on to say, this is the purpose, this is God's plan, so that they should seek the Lord. God has placed us here so that we will seek the Lord. And he says, in the hope that they may grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Hear me today, church. God is not far from any one of us. He desires that we seek him. And when we seek him with all of our heart, we will find him. When we seek him, he will direct us. And then this, this powerful truth gets deposited that many of us know. As the Apostle Paul says, for in him we love, in him we move, and in him we have our being. But at the same time, as, as we come to understand God's plan for us to seek him, there's also a warning. And that warning is found in Isaiah 31 verse 1. And Isaiah says, woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. 
And we, we have to understand in Scripture, Egypt has always been a type of this world. And as I warns, he says, woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. In other words, those that, that don't seek God, but put a dependence on the world. He says, he says and, and they rely on horses. They rely, those who trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But who do not look to the Holy One of Israel, nor seek the Lord. And, and Isaiah says, woe to them that choose not to seek the Lord, but to, but, but to put a dependence on Egypt, to rely on Egypt for help, to rely on the world. And so God is speaking to us today. How do we continue living, but with the end in mind? First of all, we have to, we have to seek God daily in our lives. The second truth that helps us to continue living, but with the end in mind. Remember, I'm not saying we stop living. We have to continue. We are in the now. But in, in this now that we find ourselves, we have to begin to develop a mindset and train ourselves to begin to live with the end in mind. And how do we continue living with the end, of the, end in mind? The second truth I want to be bring to us th this morning is be a planting of the Lord. Make sure your roots are secure in the Lord. This season has been a test for many as we have not been allowed to meet as believers as we used to doing. However, when we think about being a planting of the Lord, it is first of all a heart issue. It has to do with my relationship with the Lord and then my relationship with my spiritual family. Because out of my relationship with the Lord and my relationship with my spiritual family, there, there's certain things that begin to flow out of my life. And in Psalm 92 and verse 13 to 15, it says, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They, they shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Our willingness to be planted by God invites blessing and purpose in our lives. Please understand that this truth is be a planting of the Lord. Often we can be a planting of ourselves, but the challenge is to be a planting of the Lord. Because when we are planting of the Lord, our willingness to be planted by God invites blessing and purpose into our lives. Can I encourage you today to establish strong roots by being planted? Be a planting of the Lord, not, deci not deciding for yourself where you need to be. But when we, when we talk about flourishing, it means to grow or develop in a healthy manner. It refers to fruitfulness. The psalmist reminds us, as a planting of the Lord, we become a testimony of the goodness of the Lord. We continuously bear fruit. Listen to what he says. He says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. They'll grow, they'll develop in a healthy manner. When you are planted by the Lord, you grow and develop in a healthy manner. You become a person of purpose. And he's, he, 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 he tells us there, he says, these type of people will bear fruit in their old age. In other words, they, they, they bear fruit continuously. They will always, there'll be a freshness and a flourishing about their lives. And they will begin to declare, there will be a testimony that will flow from their mouths that the Lord is upright, God is their rock, and there is no unrighteousness in Him. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3, Isaiah speaks about God's purpose that, we com that as we commit to the Lord, he says we become trees of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. What an amazing picture that you and I, God's 
God's plan for our lives is that we would become trees of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. When, when you think about trees, it speaks about stability. It speaks about something that, that so, someone can lean against. Being planted is, is connected to God's purpose in our lives. And in this season, being planted gives us assurance that we're not alone. And yet it should challenge us to live beyond ourselves. It takes a healthy body of believers to be effective. Those who are planted by the Lord become true ambassadors in these difficult times. How do we we live with the end in mind? We we allow God to, to, to make us a planting of the Lord. And when we are planting of the Lord, we become true ambassadors in these difficult times, solid representatives of Jesus Christ. Many are looking in these days for stability in our times, battling through the day to day, and they need people that can bring about an eternal perspective to their lives. As those who are planting of the Lord, God calls us in these times to be messengers of hope and truth. Hear me today, as as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, God calls us as the planting of the Lord to be messengers of hope and truth in these times. People need to, to recognize the hope that we can find in Jesus Christ, but at the same time, they need the truth like never before. The Apostle Paul, as he as he spoke about the as about this hope and as he revealed this hope to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 to 10 listen to what he says he says but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power of God power may be of God and not of us he's speaking about this hope that we have in us he says but we have this treasure And that treasure, part of that treasure, is the Holy Spirit at work in my life. But he says we have this treasure in in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And and then he, he paints a picture for us that speaks very much into our time. He says we are hard pressed on every side. He says yet not crushed. This is the hope we have. We are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. He says we are perplexed, but not in despair. He says we are persecuted, but not forsaken. He says we are struck down, but not destroyed. It's a picture of the hope that we can find in Jesus Christ. He says always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. That the life, as, as we begin to look at, at the price that Jesus paid, the life of Jesus can be manifest through us. But we are the messengers of hope. Jesus Christ is our living hope. We are messengers of hope. In this world right now, you need to be a planting of the Lord to, to be able to love with the end in mind. You need to be a planting of the Lord so you, that you can be a messenger of hope. But not only a messenger of hope, but we need to be messengers of truth in these times. We are to speak the truth in love, as Paul would write in Ephesians. In John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus said this. He said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. How how much more today is truth needed in our times so that people could be set free? Today more than ever there is a need for the truth of God's word to be spoken in love. Those who do not know Christ more than ever need to hear the message of hope and truth. I was, I was thinking about this concept of hope and truth recently. And when you, when you think about hope, hope often can be like a pacifier. And uh, when I think about my grandson, Hunter, uh, uh, Hunter needs a pacifier from time to time. And that pacifier communicates to him that everything's going to be okay. 
But at the same time, there's, there's times when we need to bring truth to him. When, when, his, when his grandmother is busy in the kitchen and the oven is on, we need to bring truth to him that if you touch that, you're going to burn. And in these times, hear me out, more than ever, people need a message of hope and they need a message of truth. But unless we are be a planting of the Lord in our relationship and in the purpose that God has for us, we will not be the messengers, the ambassadors that Jesus calls us to be. In, the, in these times, hear me out, we are people of faith. But I've come to realize that it's not only those who are without Christ that have been affected by the virus, that have been affected economically, that has suffered loss. I challenge us today, church, let's be ready. Let's be the planting of the Lord. You and I have no idea what the future holds. Be a planting of the Lord. The evidence of this kind of lifestyle is fruitfulness. Not only in our own lives, but in the purpose that God has for us. Planting brings about a growth and a development in our lives and our ministry to others. These times are here to grow us in our relationship with Jesus, but also, it's also to establish us as the messengers of hope and truth. So how do we continue to love with the end in mind? Firstly, we need to seek God daily. We need to seek the Lord daily. Secondly, we need to be a planting of the Lord. And often uh, we lack the commitment to one to in our relationship with the Lord. And secondly, to our relationship with our spiritual family. And I want to encourage you this morning. Let's, let's be a planting of the Lord. Let's, become, let's have strong roots. Let's be established so that we can be the messengers of hope and truth. In these difficult times. How do we continue living. With the end in mind. The third truth I want to bring to us this morning. Is don't get entangled. Avoid. Being entangled. In the system of this world. Again. I use the term again. Because at some point. We've all been there. Where we've got entangled. In the things of this world. Here's our challenge. Jesus said we're in this world, but we're not of this world. D.L. Moody said this. He said Christians should live in the world, but not be filled with it. A ship lives in the water, but if the water gets into the ship, she goes to the bottom. So Christians may live in the world, but if the world gets into them, they begin to sink. We begin to, we begin to lose our eternal perspective when we get it entangled in the things of this world. In this season, I sense that those who understood the season realized that God was calling us to, to a new spiritual norm. Things were not going to be the same again. In the same way that in the natural, as we come out of a lockdown, we realize things have changed radically. There's a new norm out there. But in the same way, God has desired a new spiritual norm. But I also realize how easy it can be to slip back into our old ways. To slip back and be entangled in the system of the world again. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, John writes and he says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. He speaks about a love that we can have for the world. And that, that begins to play out in the, in the way that we begin to fall in love with the things of the world. And he makes, makes a, a, a tough statement when he says, If anyone loves the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. There's a conflict between the, the world's values and, and the value system of the world and the value system of the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul put it this way in, in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. 
And he says, therefore, if you died with Christ, and he connects dying with Christ, he says, from the basic principles of this world, he connects dying with Christ as dying from the control and the manipulation of the world. Then he, then, then he pops a question. He says, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, he says, why? As though living in the world, do you subject yourself to its regulations? And then he gives us, he gives us straight off counsel. He says, do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. Why? Because he understood how easily it is that we can slip back into our old, our old ways. I've watched how after all of this, how easily people have slipped back to their own ways. I believe the primary purpose, the Apostle Paul highlighted this, was for us to keep eternity before us. To help us to live our lives in the now but live with the end in mind. Have an eternal perspective. There is a temptation to fall back into the old ways, the desires, the, the, the plans, the things we used to do, to do. But I must say to you today, as I said in the beginning, we're living in defining moments. During the lockdown, I sense that in many ways the lockdown was a type of a wilderness experience. And we spoke about that over a number of weeks. I trust that you heard the word and you can go back and listen to it again. But let me remind you, when God spoke to Israel about the wilderness experience that he had taken them into, he said this to them in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. And he said, and you shall remember, speaking to Israel, that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. And then he begins to explain to them why he took them in the wilderness. He said, one, so that I would humble you. Two, that I would test you. And number three is that I, what, that I would come to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep my commandments or not. Let me remind us that this season that we've gone through has been a humbling time. It's like the rug got pulled out under us. Many of us had these amazing plans, January and February, and suddenly something happened and became a humbling experience. Many people turning to God. It was also a time of test because some of our greatest support systems were no longer there. Some of us felt fragile because of our job situations, not knowing the uncertainty. But in this test, God was wanting to see what was in our hearts, whether we would keep, our, keep his commandments or not. And so we come to understand today that God wants us to live with the end in mind. And in this, in this account, we come to realize how easily the work that the Holy Spirit has done in our lives, how easily, if we're not careful, it can become undone. Let me bring you the Apostle Paul's measuring stick today for our lives. Remember, he said this, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. So he encourages us to follow his example because he's so confident that he's following Jesus. I want to I I close with a, with a scripture this morning because this becomes our measuring stick. In Acts, chapter, in Acts chapter 20 verse 24 in the New Living Translation, he says this. He says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. And then he defines that work. He says the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. He says, my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when we have, when we have an eternal perspective, when we, we live our lives with the end in mind, 
then we come to this place where we say, my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for the purpose why God created me, the assignment that the Lord has for my life. And that assignment is no different to the assignment that the Apostle Paul had. And that was to, was to tell others about the good news of the wonderful grace of God. Can I say to us today that we've experienced God's grace. The Holy Spirit is challenging us to embrace this tension that we find ourselves in right now about living in the now, but with the end in mind. It's a tension, it's a challenge. How do we continue to live with the end in mind? Number one is we keep seeking the Lord daily. We're not talking about something casual. We're speaking about something intentional. How do we continue to live with the end in mind? Be a planting of the Lord. Be a planting of the Lord. Become a tree of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. Become a messenger, an ambassador, a, a, a messenger of God's hope and God's truth. When the Apostle Paul speaks about uh, that his assignment is telling others of the good news, telling others of the hope that we have and the truth that people need to receive in this time. How do we continue living but with the end in mind? We can only do this when we avoid becoming entangled in the systems of this world again. God has done some amazing work. I know this has been a challenging time, but I also know that in this lockdown and in this entire time, when many were cut off, that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to us and working in our lives. And I want to challenge us this morning. Let's not allow ourselves to slip back, but let's continue to live with the end in mind. You know, when, when the Apostle spoke about a life beyond this, he reminded us that we will stand before God and give an account for our lives. As we come to the Lord's table today, can I ask you to pause, take some time to reflect, and as the Holy Spirit challenges us today to live our lives with the end in mind, that we ask the Holy Spirit to help us, that we make a choice. Remember in my message this morning, so often we don't feel like we can, but when we make a choice, the Spirit of God comes in and empowers us to carry that through. The Holy Spirit is here as our helper. And today, as we come to the Lord's table, can we stop this morning, pause, and ask the Holy Spirit to help us, that we will not take steps back, but that we will keep seeking the Lord daily, being intentional, not casual, but being intentional, that we'll be a planting of the Lord. We'd allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen our roots, that we'll become trees of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. That will become true ambassadors for Jesus Christ in these times where the message of hope and truth is so needed. And that we would avoid the pitfall of going back and become entangled. That the Holy Spirit will show us and convict us and show us when we're taking steps back. When we're going back to what we deem to be the norm and yet God has defined a new spiritual norm for the next season of our lives. So I ask you this morning, before we come to the Lord's table, would you bow your head this morning? And in a couple of moments, would you reflect and just speak to the Lord? And this morning, it's a place of choice. But it's also a time of empowerment by the Holy Spirit that he would minister to our hearts this morning and allow God to do a work that we can live right now, but love with the end in mind and be pleasing to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. God, you are such a loving father. You love us, you care for us. 
Thank you for your goodness in our lives. God, many of us don't understand the fullness of the season that we find ourselves in. And yet we know that you've allowed us to come into this season. And whenever you do something, there's a purpose behind it. And God, as we begin to engage these times, difficult times, very difficult time for others. Help us that we would live. Holy Spirit, we ask you today, come and help us. That we would live, even though we're in this world, but that we'd live with the end in mind. Teach us how to keep seeking you daily. Help us to grow and be strengthened, to be a planting of the Lord, to be people of purpose in, the, in these days that will be ambassadors, messengers of hope and truth. And then when we, when, we, when we begin to slip in any way back into our old way, when we become entangled with the things of this world, I ask you today, in the name of Jesus, would you, would you uh, alert us? Would you grab our attention? I pray for everyone that listens to this word today that, Lord, we would receive what the Spirit is saying and that we would submit and, and make wise choices concerning our lives, Lord, so that you can empower us. We thank you once again, Lord, for speaking to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come to the Lord's table this morning, um, the Apostle Paul in the book of Corinthians chapter 11 said to us, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took this bread. And he said, this is the Lord's body, which was broken for us. He said, take this, eat this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. As of, uh, for as often as we take the bread, we take the cup, we do this in remembrance of the Lord. I want to ask you this, this morning, as we take the bread and as we take the cup today, can we celebrate the goodness of the Lord in our lives. Let's come with hearts of gratitude today and give thanks for what God has done for us. Let's come before God today and say, Lord, help us that we love with the end in mind. Let's partake together. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Uh, thank you so much for our time together.